Yale graduate student Arjun Ganesan is in the process of developing a diagnostic tool to keep our food supply safe. It's all part of the work of the Yale Entrepreneurial Institute and the Summer Incubator Program. And here to tell us more about it is Arjun Ganesan from Yale School of Medicine. Rather, Management. School of Management. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I upped you up there a little bit, didn't I? <laughs> Not really sure. <laughs> exactly. Well, anyway, but we are talking about a little bit of science here when you talk about the food of supply, right? Of course. Arjun, first of all, let's talk about the food supply. Mm -hmm. This is obviously a big concern. Right. Um, so what's happening is, as you guys know, about the uh, outbreaks in Europe, it's really, really important that you get on top of um, what's causing the outbreak, and you need to zone in on it, and you need to make sure that that supply is cut off as soon as possible. But that's right, because we've also have our, had our own food outbreaks here in the United States. Oh, all the time. And it's almost part of protocol uh, that's uh, done by the USDA, which is the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which makes sure that uh, every thing that comes out from a, from the meatpacking or from the packaged food industry needs to undergo a specific series of tests to make sure that there are no food pathogens to make sure that it's safe for consumption. And that's quite a process, isn't it? It is. Right now, it takes about three days. Oh my! So, tell us about what so, you come up with. <laughs> right. So every time you see news which says that uh, one million cans of food have been, you know, uh, the, the acid to come back, there's a specific reason. It's because Three days is a little too long. You, you take a sample of food, and then you, what you do is you culture the bacteria, which might be there in the sample, for three days. Now, what we've done is we've come up with a device which can pretty much do away with the whole culture process and do the entire testing in about 10 minutes. What we have is a device that can pretty much pick out a bacteria, uh, which, I mean, if I were to draw a paddle, it's almost like picking out a needle in a haystack. You can pr pretty much pick out one bacteria out of your entire sample. So instead of waiting three days, companies can find out instantly, mm -hmm. almost 10 minutes, That's that right. whether th there's been some kind of, of uh, uh, bacteria in, in the food supply. That's right. So um, again, going to the 10-minute to the mark is something that we'd be looking to achieve in about a year, year and a half from now. What we have ready to go right now is something that can detect uh, bacteria in your, uh, in your food samples in about two hours as opposed to 48 or 36 hours, which is what it takes right now. But you say th this process will not be available for another year, year and a half? I mean, there are regulatory processes that you need to mm -hmm. go through. You, you still need to build out a device. I mean, right now it looks, uh, I mean, the actual process is almost the size of this table. But eventually when the thing is ready to go, it's going to be the size of a small laptop, which is going to be completely portable. And what's even more interesting is the same thing can be adapted to uh, testing human blood for blood for bacteria for viruses or any of anything that can be pathogenic in your uh, blood. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so why did you choose this food? You know, to come up with something like this and this test right. to to work on. Uh, so it started. I, I came to school uh, as an entrepreneur. I yes. ran a couple of businesses before coming to school, and I wanted to be in the high tech business. So Yale's got this um, this program called the EEP, which is Basically, what they do is they have this office, which is called the Office of Cooperative Research, which aggregates all of the patents that are developed at Yale. And then a select few of us get, get this opportunity to look at these patents and analyze and understand the commercial viability behind each of these patents. So it's, it's really a fun process if you think about it. So you, had, uh, you got to choose which one you wanted oh, to, yeah, I went to like investigate. I went through four different patents you before did. I even got here. <laughs> uh, it's, it's almost like courtship because what you're doing is you're talking to the professor, you're talking to the PhDs, you're trying to figure out what the market is, but you also want to make sure that uh, you have a really good rapport working with these people because there's a good chance these people are going to be your partners for life because these are not small ventures. I mean, most high-tech ventures are high risk and high reward, and there's a lot of trust involved. So um, you sort of figure out if these are the right people that you want to work with, and then you finally decide uh, if the market's large enough, you go into it. And so after four, after looking at four possib right. possibilities, you chose this one. That's right. And you think you hit a home run here? Um, we might have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've closed on uh, our first round of financing so far. We've got uh, the funding that we required, which should at least give us sufficient runway to take us to the next milestone. So hopefully that should uh, put us on the right track. You really had to investigate this, didn't you? Uh, so there is a lot of due diligence that mm -hmm. happens, uh, which is what uh, this is institute called the Yale Entrepreneurial Institute, which is the business incubator at Yale. 
um, which helps you out. What they do is they set you up with mentors who are exp experienced entrepreneurs, experienced CEOs of uh, people in each of these industries. They come in and then they help you groom your business. So over 10 weeks this summer, what I did was I took it from a concept and while work was going in the lab, the scientist was working in the lab, um, I was out meeting people, I was out uh, understanding the market, talking to real time customers, talking to investors and figuring out which of these is the right route. I mean, as I said, there were two possible routes. We could have either gone with uh, blood and clinical diagnostics or food safety. Food safety you was low-hanging food fruit. safety. Absolutely, and that's where we are right now. So did you get the funding that you needed? Yes, for now we do. That's excellent. All right, for those Thank people you. right now, <laughs> a lot of people are looking to do different things with this, this tight economy. Right. You're here, you're seeing more and more entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for those people? Lean businesses, you know what I mean? I mean, that was probably the, the, the biggest mistake that I did running in my old businesses because I had 47 employees. Um, it, don't hire when you don't need people. You know what I mean? It, it really makes good sense to hire quality people who are capable of uh, operating with a wide range of resources. So surround yourself with the best and the brightest that you can possibly gather. Absolutely. But also, really, if you have a dream, if you have an idea, don't you think you should really just go for it? Why oh. not, right? There's no good time to start, right? I mean, if you look at it, the, w the best of companies were started during the worst of recessions. So, I mean, there's, there's no such thing as, um, you know, a good time to start. As long as you have a good idea and you think it can gain fruition by going to market, you should totally run with it. Well, we can't wait to see what happens with you, Arjun. This is awesome. Thank we're you. looking forward to it. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And coming up next, another brain-boosting dish from the author of Get Smart, Samantha Heller is here when Connecticut Style returns. Stay with us.